We need to deal with the root of this evil rather than the fruit of this evil. And we need to ask ourselves some tough questions. Your vote isn't just affecting you. Your kids, your kids' kids are coming. They are going to have to deal with what we choose today. Start praying to God for wisdom, praying to God for ways that people can start to open their eyes to really the truth that's taking place around them because this is such a critical moment in history. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Revelation in the News. I'm your host, Zach Drew. I'm Sasha Volk. And I'm Taylor Schlobaum. Okay, so a lot is going on this week. Oh, my goodness. We have so many articles. Uh, there has been a, a crazy acceleration of terrorism. Uh, it's not slowing down. There has been nearly an active terror almost every single day. Um, people aren't taking it seriously at all. We know that the open borders are leading to sleeper cells throughout all of the United States, and yet uh, I was watching the crazy antics at the Democratic National Convention this week, and nobody cares. No. That's, I mean, did you watch it this week? Honestly, it's such a... Uh, I watched the RNC and I watched the DNC just to see what's going on. What do our politicians have to say about these topics? And honestly, it was almost appalling to see that nobody is bringing up the important topics. Nobody was talking about terrorism. Nobody is talking about the people that are dying across yeah. our world right now. Uh, you know, we were going to talk about this later on in the show, but the very first day of the Democratic National Convention, uh, there were 61 speakers. Out of the 61 yeah. speakers, not one single one mentioned Islam, terror, terrorism, ISIL, ISIS, whatever you want to call it. Not a single person did that. I couldn't believe it. I was shocked. And, you know, there was other things like uh, that I just can't believe either. It's, you know, we know just from studying Hillary's past that, she, you know, she's unethical. She's, mm -hmm. you know, and according to our laws in this country, she should be considered an actual criminal. Now, now here's the thing. It's just, and I'm not trying to get like, you know, so crazy over political here. It's just according to our laws in our country, she should be considered a criminal. And yet, her supporters simply 100% just do not care. And the New Testament tells us in the, in the end days, people aren't going to believe the truth. And we're seeing that. I, you know, I'm sitting there scratching my head as I, wow. I watch some of the speeches. It's, it's as if they're saying, you know, talking about this uh, beautiful yellow highlighter. And like, you know what? A, one of the most incredible things about this an awesome, awesome highlighter is the the color of it, the brilliant blue color of this highlighter. And you hear everybody cheer and, and clap, and that's so wonderful. I love that blue highlighter. Whenever we're sitting at home thinking, oh, my goodness, that's a yellow highlighter. Yeah. I can see it from yeah. there. But yeah. yet they're just not believing the truth. And honestly, as of this week, it's been amazing to watch that with the DNC, really, it's made between the RNC, or the RNC and the DNC. It's really, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn has talked about it so many times, but Truly, these times are pushing us. The gray is being abolished, and you're yeah. either going to one area or you're going to another. But there's really no gray area anymore because there's so many stances on what's taking place, but you have, like, it's forcing us to really pick a side at this point and say, do I believe on this side or do I believe on that side? But right now, the fact that it's almost like they're painting the picture, like you just said, of two different, two different pictures, but what world are you looking at? We're living in a world where people are getting killed. We're living in a world where there are terrorists threatening to come into our country, and we're saying, let them in. Let's open the borders. That is the most confusing thing. Yes. And it's like, it, for me, it's like, okay, well, what about my safety? What about the people in our country? Do you not care about us? They, and that's, that's the thing. And Isaiah 520 says that one of the most horrible things that can ever happen to a, a community, a country, the thing that's at the very bottom, at the bottom of the barrel, is whenever they start calling the evil things good and the good things evil. Whenever we know beyond a shadow of a doubt, it's facts. And we're going to be sharing the articles today that open borders are leading to sleeper cells throughout the entire United States. The open borders in the UK, the open borders in Germany have led to sleeper cells throughout the entire countries. And yet we have a candidate that wants to uh, increase the open borders whenever we know that radical Islamic terrorists and some good people, but Islamic radical terrorists are coming across the border and they just don't 
care. They're not just simply saying, you know, let's create, you know, a, a, a much better vetting system where we yeah. can actually find out what these, you know, it's nothing. It's just, let's just create a carte blanche, you know, it's just like, let's come into the country well, regardless. Well, and see, that's where I want to say that no matter what, it's because no matter what, we have to care about others. The Bible says to take care of the widows, the orphans, and we have a heart in this nation. It's, we have a Judeo-Christian nation. We have a heart for others, but we also have to take care of the people that we already have here. And we actually, I watched Joel Richardson speak the other night. Um, and Author of he, the Islamic Antichrist. Yes, and yeah. he's amazing. But what he said it literally stuck out to me, and it's a quote that I will use. But he was talking about the church. He was talking about America. And he said, when you have a flock of sheep and you're the shepherd, you, of course, you have a compassionate heart. You're taking care of your sheep. You're saying, I love these sheep. I want to make sure they're doing well in life. But when a wolf comes up and it says that it's going to kill your sheep and it's going to eat your sheep, do you say, oh, but I just love that wolf too. I just love that wolf too. I want to go take care of that wolf. You come in with my sheep when you know its agenda ahead of time. That's what we're doing right now. We know, and I'm not saying every Syrian refugee is like this. I have a heart as well. But it comes down to a vetting process. We need to know who is coming into our country. We can't just let everybody in just because we have a heart for people. We have to figure out are, who are these people? Why do they need to be here? And is there a way even overseas that we can help them ahead of time? So we don't have to relocate all of these families, all of these millions of people over to various countries and into America. Yeah. Is that really mm -hmm. necessary when we have other countries as well that we can help them well, in? Well, yeah. the, the media is distracting everyone right now. I mean, they were talking more about at the DNC and what happened when or when Trump addressed saying, Russia, we should have Russia check into this email scandal with Hillary Clinton. Now, we're not asking these questions about, okay, well, mm -hmm. let's look at our borders. Let's see what we're doing here. We're distracting. We're putting the focus over on Trump, making him seem like the oh, bad guy, yeah. when Russia's not even an issue right now. You know, it's all smoke, smoke and mirrors. That's what it is. So but let's get down to the facts. We're going to continue this conversation, but we're, we're not just going to uh, just want to talk about our opinions. Let's get to the facts of what these major media news outlets are saying. Well, mm -hmm. this week, uh, the religion of peace has struck again. Um, we have the leader of France who says we are at war with ISIS. This is the Daily Mail News after the Islamist knifeman chanting Allahu Akbar, which means Allah is great beheads a French priest, hmm. walks into their church, it was a, you know, a, a Catholic priest actually, and an 86-year-old man, and beheads him at the altar. And they leave nuns fighting for uh, their life after storming mass and before even police, uh, police could shoot them dead. Wow, and that just, that happened, that happened this week. And, and then also we yeah. have uh, ISIS, who has been, after that, remember, ISIS does not have a hidden agenda. They have a public agenda. They tell you exactly what they're going to do yeah. before they do it. And I have an article here that really just backs up what they say. I mean, right here, it says, ISIS warns London and Washington next to be attacked. Like Zach said, they're going to tell you what they're going to do. It's in their plans. And basically, London will be the next, and then Washington, D.C. They have this posted on the jihadi messaging on app Telegram. We know what's going to happen. And we need to take time. We need to look into this and stop being distracted from other things. It's going to happen. Well, and it's crazy to see because we have Europe as our, it's really like our guide right now. They do everything and then we follow and in their follows, footsteps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so as America. And so right now in Germany, we have multiple terrorist attacks. We have a suicide bomber in Germany who pledged alliance to ISIS leader. It says the, su the Syrian suicide bomber who injured 15 people and a music festival mm -hmm. in Germany left behind a video pledging alliance to ISIS leader. Wow. And then we also, going forward from that, then we have another just within days, another attack also in Germany. A Munich gunman planned attack for a year, the official yeah. said. It the says the gunman who, plan or who killed nine people in a rampage in Munich was obsessed with mass shootings, for appeared year, huh? to have planned to this attack for a year, official said. Yeah, and he, killed, he ended up killing nine people. And, uh, you know, also this week, there was another man shouting Allahu Akbar who took a machete to someone in a train. And, for example, like that man that I just mentioned and the, the man that in Germany, that mm -hmm. the suicide bomber mm -hmm. this week, they were both Syrian refugees. Understand that. Yeah. That 
they were they they came into Germany from Syria through the refugee program. They were Syrian refugees, okay? The exact same type of Syrian refugees that we have admitted into the United States. Just in the fiscal year of 2016 alone so far, we have admitted 6,726 refugees. Why in the world would we think that those type of things are going to start happening in a more accelerated uh, thing that, you know, for example, like I said, Germany, these attacks have been because of the Syrian refugees. Mm -hmm. How can we think that it's not coming to America? Now, like you said in the beginning, we're not saying that nobody should come over here, but there's got to be a, a much better system yeah. we can, because we know nothing about these people. And yet it is accelerating. It's absolutely accelerating. You know, even talking about, you know, the whole uh, Nice, France, mm -hmm. you know, 84 people, oh, I believe, died from that yes. radical uh, Islamic extremist. And we've read this article a couple weeks ago, but let's just let this sink in for a second. You know, people say, well, uh, you know, it's always been this way. It's not really in increasing. It, we're just, you know, no, it is increasing. And here's just one fact article about it. It says that France's terror log, 230 plus killed in attacks just since 2015. In France alone, 230 people have died from Islamic attacks. That is more than the entire previous century of terrorism in France. We can't wow. say that th this, it's not uh, increasing. Yeah, and I mean, I got an article here and I've mentioned it before, but I have to say it again. It's very tragic. It says, terrorism, the new normal of today's traveler. Yeah. Now, mm. picture yourself, you're in France, there has to be guns and guardmen around you just because we don't know when the next strike's gonna hit. When is this gonna happen to America? We may not know, but we can sure prevent it if we start looking into what's happening over there. We can't just say, we're on our own nation, we've got our own things going on, and that's over there. It's going to come over here. And yet, complete madness craziness, insanity has come upon the land. Mm -hmm. I mean, people are just believing, they're believing lies. And they're not taking this threat seriously at all. You know, like I said, you have one candidate that says, let's build a wall, which borders are completely biblical. Another candidate says, let's destroy our the borders and let's create bridges instead. They're just not taking it seriously. Mm -hmm. I have an article here from Fox News. Uh, Secretary of State John Kerry said in Vienna uh, last week that air conditioners as big as a threat as ISIS. <laughs> just let that sink in. The Secretary of State, I mean... Yeah. I wish I could just say it like a hundred times in a row to let it sink in. This is the most ridiculous, most stupid thing I've heard in a long time. That he's actually let me read it. Secretary of State John Kerry said in Vienna last Friday that air conditioners and refrigerators are as big of a threat to life as a threat of terrorism posed by groups like the Islamic State. I swear these people are living in an alternate reality. Yeah. They well, don't live in this world. They don't live in this universe. Well, and if they were living in this universe, they'd realize terrorism is a major threat right now. This isn't just something that's happening and it's a phase that will pass through. This is a growing issue. And even during the DNC, I know we talked about it a little bit earlier in the show, but I have the article right here, and it says... Republicans claim that Democrats did not mention terrorism or ISIL on the first night of the Democratic National Convention is correct. It said following Monday night's speeches, Republicans blasted the Democrats for a lack of focus on terrorism from the 61 speakers. So 61 speakers got up on the podium, spoke, and no one mentioned ISIS. No one mentioned the terrorist attacks that are happening and that are coming to our nation. And that's right now, that's where I'm standing in the gap really saying, please people wake up because we can't, um, of course, we have other issues we need to focus on. But right now, the pressing issue is that people are threatening our lives. People are saying they are going to come across. And I have another article right here. Al-Qaeda leader chillingly urges followers to kidnap Westerners just days after attacks wow. to try to abduct, or trying to abduct RF, RAF servicemen. Yeah, Royal Air but Force. Mm -hmm. the Al-Qaeda leader, he's, chill, or he's absolutely saying as a mandate, kidnap Westerners, kidnap them, so then we can have them as bargaining chips to free jailed militants. Why is this okay? Why are we not 
speaking about this from a platform where this political platform right now, you have the power to do something about this. And if you don't take this opportunity to actually do something and to prevent these attacks from happening in our nation, then that's in your hands. That's on your hands. And that, as a leader, I'm just pr crying out right now to please, as you're watching this, please make sure that you start making yourself familiar with these things and make sure that your vote is in the right place for somebody who will stand up against terrorism. Yeah, the Democratic National Convention didn't talk about the things that really mattered this week. I mean, I watched many of their speeches, and, and especially Hillary Clinton's speech uh, this week, the last night, Thursday night of the Democratic National Convention. And the things that she was proposing, you'd think, oh, my goodness, if you're sitting in the audience, I just won the lottery. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything is just oh. given to you on a silver platter. Like, it works out for everybody in America except for the, for the people that actually have, you know, money. Like, the rich people in America, it's a, it's a sad day for them. But uh, if you're not them, it is a lottery system. Oh, I mean, it, yeah. it's absolutely incredible. Well, and it's all about, it's on that platform of we want to help out the people that are in poverty. We want to help the people that don't have a lot. And yeah, that's the whole point of a lot of the systems. But when you take advantage of the system or when the system gives you so much that you forget that you have that you can put back in that you can take control back on your life and that those systems were originally just placed to help you out during a hard time and then get you back on your feet but when you start to live off of those systems it provides a gut or it provides a community that literally lives in poverty that they never leave poverty because that's all they know and for generations you look in the ghettos of america you look in the inner cities of america that has that is what's happened that is generations of people even to my generation of people. I grew up in Oakland, California. I know so many people who have lived on this system their whole entire lives. And yes, they are loving, caring, amazing people. They're my friends to this day. But at the end of the day, it's hard for me because I'm urging my friends saying, hey, like you don't have to take that. Or hey, you like, we can like, we're, a, we're in a country where we're allowed to work. That's an awesome thing. When really it's looked at like from that system as, mm -hmm. Oh, like, well, I don't want to work that hard so I can get free money, I can get a free cell phone, I can get free handouts, and I can live off that. But where is this money coming from? That's the question. And, and that's why is where, it bad? Yeah. Why is it bad that everyone lives off of the yeah. system? That's the question is, why, do we, why are we pushing it so where, okay, we'll give you money here, we'll give you money, money here. You're just taking it in. What happens one day when they say you have to do this or with this when you want that money when that comes in? You have nothing to cover yourself. Well, and it's a scary thing when in the past where we've seen Obama actually say, if I don't get my, where, my way with Planned Parenthood, with mm -hmm. that whole issue, if you pull out the money from Planned Parenthood, I will pull out the money mm -hmm. from um, government institutions helping the people in poverty. That's a control. That's a hand of control saying that if I don't get my way, I'm going to pull this. Well, what do you think is going to happen if people are living in poverty? in America don't have their money. They don't have food on their tables to feed their children. They're relying on this to live. Mm -hmm. What do you think is going to happen? Riots, craziness in the street, chaos in the street, pr uh, protests that we've never seen before that are not going to be peaceful. Yeah. That is bringing chaos to America. And at the end of the day, we have to say, where's our country going and where is our vote? Because we have to make sure we actually go in the right direction with this election. Yeah, and that's, you know, whenever you, whenever you listen to the things that were being said, everything was simply just the, you know, I always said everybody's winning the lottery. It just simply makes them more dependent on the government, more and more sure. and more, like you were saying, more and more and more dependent on the government, or we rely on the government. You know, the government controls every aspect of our life, the paycheck that we get, the food that we eat. You know, if, you know mm -hmm. they're talking about the systems, and uh, that's socialism. Mm -hmm. That's what socialism is. You need to understand that, but yet they're not talking about the big things, like this report here. This report here, the list of Islamic terrorism, just in 2016, I actually updated it this week, and I used the font, which is Times New Roman 14, from their particular website, and it ends up being 104 pages of Islamic uh, terrorist uh, attacks just in 2016, where there's been 1,274 attacks in 50 countries, 11,774 people have died. 11,774, and 14,303 additional people have been injured. But yet, they don't talk about it. You see, securing our borders, mm -hmm. securing our borders is one of the huge issues. It's not only an, an immigration issue, but it's an issue of national security. Right. You see, I don't understand. You know, ISIS is moving across the southern border. We know yeah. that. We have several articles we're going to read. But why? Why would they come across, why would they sneak across our southern border? 
Okay, think about this. Why would you have Muslim men traveling halfway across the world to sneak in through the southern border into a Judeo-Christian country? Why? Would, for example, where's Dubai in this picture? <laughs> yes. I mean, Dubai, and there's pictures on the screen, the most incredible Middle Eastern country. I mean, it puts, in many aspects, New York City to shame. Oh. I mean, it is extravagant. There are more billionaires in, in that particular city than I believe any other billionaires in the world. I mean, it is an insane country, as you're seeing. Even the police yeah. cars. I mean, you're looking at Aston Martins, <laughs> Lamborghinis, uh, Maserati. you know, Maseratis yes. for their mm -hmm. police cars. The excess and extravagance is absolutely unreal. Why aren't these Muslim men sneaking into the their simple, you know, the, the border countries of Saudi Arabia or the United Emirates or whatever? Why? Why aren't they doing that? Especially when if you think about, they're Muslim. Why wouldn't they want to go to a neighboring country that is extremely wealthy and successful mm -hmm. that's also a Muslim nation? Doesn't Why would they cover, come halfway across the world to sneak into the southern border of a Judeo-Christian nation, a, a religion that they don't even agree with, that they hate, of a, of a country that they refer to as the great Satan? Why in the world would they do this? To set up sleeper cells. To, sl to set up days of jihad in America. And it's a really amazing thing to see because if you actually study the Islamic faith, they are so end times. We sometimes, we, like mm -hmm. there's so many groups that are like, oh, the Christians that believe in the end times, wow, like they must be crazy. But you have a whole people group that truly believe in their end times doctrine. And they actually are pushing right now with the sleeper cells and all of these terrorist attacks, they are pushing their agenda with the end times, with their end times, because it all lines up. And so when we look at our borders right now, I have confirmed reports right here, three in a row, confirmed. Eight Syrians caught at Texas border in Laredo. Another nice. one, uh, confirmed six men from Pakistan, Afghanistan, illegally crossing the border. Another one, illegal border or illegal border crossings of families this yep. year has already surpassed all, all of 2015. That means everybody that we already said, wow, that's a huge number of 2015 of all of the families coming across. We've already surpassed that just within the first seven months of 2016. And those, you know, even talking about that, the Syrians, the Pakistanis, the Afghanis, these are just the ones that we have caught. Mm -hmm. Okay, understand that. You yeah. got to understand. That. These are just the ones that we have caught. I have a shocking article here, all right? Let me read it for you. <laughs> U.S. intelligence chief says this. Open borders, talk about the U.K. and Germany, Open borders has caused or allowed Islamic State to set up sleeper cells in the UK and Germany. Okay, the European Union's open borders policy has allowed Islamic State terrorists to set up sleeper cells in Britain, Germany, and Italy, where they are planning Paris and Brussels-style attacks, America's most senior intelligence chief has said, uh, this is uh, James Clapper, the U.S. Director of National Intelligence. you got to understand this. The U.S. Director of National Intelligence, James Clapper, said that the open borders in the U.K., the open borders in Germany, the same type of open borders that we have and the same type of open borders that Hillary Clinton wants to open wide open, the open borders in the country are leading to sleeper cells mm. with a, a radical Islamic terrorists all throughout their countries. Why in the world would we not think that our open borders are creating sleeper cells all throughout America as well? It would actually, here's the thing, it would actually make more sense to believe that there are sleeper cells in America, because of our open borders, than it would to not believe that there are sleeper cells all throughout America. This is absolutely unreal. I mean, even General John Kelly, he's the commander of the Southern C Command, he says that um, U.S. military is concerned ISIS fighters returning to the Caribbean could even reach our border. He says in a quote here, and I'm going to read it, a hundred certainly doesn't seem like a lot, but it is. 
the countries that came from uh, are the countries they're dealing with right now are totally unable to deal with it. If you don't think that we're going to not be unable to deal with it, only 100 refugees, only 100 foreigner fires are tearing down these other nations. And that, that's just 100. Wow. We only have a couple minutes left, and we still have a lot to cover. I want to run a video for you showing, this is actually a crazy video from the 1990s of Bill Clinton that is actually proposing the exact same tr things that Trump is proposing today, but, yet, but now Trump is the evil man in this 2016 election. Run that video. One of these areas is the problem of illegal immigration. After years of neglect, this administration has taken a strong stand to stiffen the protection of our borders. We are increasing border controls by 50 percent. We are increasing inspections to prevent the hiring of illegal immigrants. And tonight I announce I will sign an executive order to deny federal contracts to businesses that hire illegal immigrants. Let me be very clear about this. We are still a nation of immigrants. We should be proud of it. We should honor every legal immigrant here working hard to be a good citizen, working hard to become a new citizen. But we are also a nation of laws. Well, I sure would definitely say that the wow. Democratic platform has changed in the last 20 years, wouldn't you? Absolutely. You know, especially, like I said, that they're absolutely bashing Trump, that the Democratic Party is bashing Trump for saying the exact same things that Bill Clinton was saying just 20 years ago. Now they're saying that air conditioners are as big of a threat as ISIS. So what does the Word of God have to say about this? Let me read it for you. In Nahum chapter 3, Nahum is talking uh, uh, to Nineveh, talking about the judgment that's coming to Nineveh. Mm -hmm. There have been striking parallels to Nineveh and our current state of America that have been made known. You can find them all over the Internet. So kind of Nineveh and America are in the, kind of the same state. Uh, as this particular portion of scripture. So he's talking about judgment coming to Nineveh, and he says this, Woe to the city of blood, full of lies, full of plunder, never without victims. That's verse 3. We're running out of time, so I'm actually going to have to skip down to verse 12 right now. This is a sign of judgment. All your fortresses, your fortresses, these are your, the protection, the gates or the borders of your land. All your fortresses, they're like fig trees. And with their first ripe fruit, they, uh, when they are shaken, the figs fall into the mouth of the eater, saying, you have weak borders, weak system, weak fortresses as a sign of God's judgment. And the latter half of verse 13 says this, the gates of your land, the gates of your land, the borders unto your country or city, the gates of your land are wide open to your enemies. Fire has consumed the bars of your gates. The word of God says specifically that open borders are a sign of God's judgment. I'm going to read with one more verse. Deuteronomy 28, 52. They shall besiege you at all of your gates, entrances to your city or, or borders, until your high and fortified walls in which you trust come down throughout all your land, and they shall besiege you on all of your gates throughout all your land. The gates, the borders. All of your gates throughout all your land which the Lord God has given you. Understand this, a sign of God's judgment is that our enemies will besiege us at all of our borders, the borders that the Lord God has given us. Mm. Now is the time to pray. We, we need to pray for our leaders. Pray that our country can change directions in Jesus' name. This current election, you know, it's, it's a right to vote. And we have to be responsible Christians with the things that the Lord has given us. And one of those responsibilities is to vote in particular people into office. You see, this is the greatest election, the most significant election since the Civil War. The country is about to change, and a large portion of it is based on who we elect as the next president. It's time to get ready, people. It's time to do your duty, and it's time to pray for yes. this country. This has been Revelation in the News. We'll see you next week.